Every day, our body is exposed to a lot of bacteria, viruses, and toxins. But we are able to live a healthy life without any disease. This is because our body has an army. This army consists of organs, cells, and molecules that work together to protect us from these bacteria, viruses, and toxins. This army is called the immune system. If any pathogen enters our body, our immune system firstly will identify it, then mount an attack till eliminating this pathogen. But not only that, it also develops a mechanism to remember this pathogen in case it invades our body again, to kill this pathogen in a faster and better way. After we knew that the army of our body is called the immune system, let's meet with the soldiers that will mount the attack. The soldiers are eutrophil, eosinophil, basophil, mast cells, monocyte, macrophage, dendritic cells, natural killer cells, B cells, and T cells. After we knew the name of each soldier, let's see how they formed, then we will discuss the function of each cell individual. The hematopoiesis or the formation process of the soldiers takes place in the bone marrow. The bone marrow has a lot of stem cells. The stem cell is a cell which has the ability to differentiate to any cell type. Here it will differentiate into the soldiers of the immune system by converting into myeloid progenitor cells or lymphoid progenitor cells. Myeloid progenitor cells give all soldiers except B cells, T cells, natural killer cells, which are given by the lymphoid progenitor cells. The first soldier we are going to talk about is the neutrophil. Neutrophil is a phagocyte and a granulocyte. Phagocyte because it performs phagocytosis process or pathogen engulfment process. And granulocyte because it has granules inside it. And now let's talk about how neutrophil kills any pathogen. If neutrophil finds a pathogen, it performs phagocytosis process and engulfs the pathogen inside it and surrounds it with a physical so it ends up in a phagosome. Now neutrophil has two ways to kill this pathogen. The first one by their cytoplasmic granules and second one by the oxidative burst process. These granules fuse with this phagosome to form a phagolysosome. The granules contain molecules that lower the pH, making it very acidic. And this acidic pH kills only 200% of pathogens, because there are some pathogens which can live in acidic environment. And the second way is the oxidative burst process. Neutrophil has the ability to engulf a lot of pathogens inside it, and produces highly reactive molecules like hydrogen peroxides that destroy DNA and proteins ends up killing the neutrophil. So we can say neutrophil commits suicide to be killed with a lot of pathogen inside. The second soldier is eosinophil. Eosinophil is the same as neutrophil, phagocyte and granulocyte. But eosinophil is specific to parasites. Basophils and mast cells, they are also soldiers of the immune system. They are also granulocytes, but they aren't phagocytes. Both have a great role in the inflammation process. Inflammation is a defense mechanism in the body toward anything harmful, trying to heal itself. Basophil and mast cells are able to release their granules and cytokines to amplify the inflammation. Both also have a role in allergic responses. Allergy is an immune response to foreign substance. Our immune system thinks it is harmful but it isn't harmful at all. Monocyte also is a soldier of the immune system. Monocytes only circulate in the blood. Some monocytes migrate into tissues and differentiate into macrophage which stay there. Other monocytes differentiate into dendritic cells. These dendritic cells have the ability to move through blood, lymph, and tissues. Monocyte, macrophage, and dendritic cells are phagocytes and can produce cytokines to amplify the inflammation. Dendritic cells and macrophage both can make antigen presentation. Here is the antigen presentation process. Once dendritic cells see the pathogen, they will perform phagocytosis process. And then dendritic cells will break this pathogen apart and take part and present it on its surface to another cells which have no eyes and can't identify the whole pathogen but only identify it when its antigen is presented. These cells which have no eyes are T cells. Once T cells identify the antigen presented, clonal expansion happens. Clonal expansion means that T cells will divide many times and give a lot of T cells. Then T cells will differentiate into T helper cells, which has CD4 marker on its surface, and this T helper cell helps and activates all immune cells. And T cytotoxic cells, which has CD8 marker on its surface, and these cells will kill virus and cancer cells. 
On the other hand, there are cells which have eyes. These cells are B cells. The eyes of B cells are the receptors in its surface that facilitate identification and phagocytosis process to pathogen. Also, B cells have the ability for antigen presentation. And yes, antigen presentation for the activation, clonal expansion, and differentiation of T cells. The last soldier of immune system is natural killer cells. Natural killer cell is like T cytotoxic cells, fight viruses, and can cancer cells. After we met the soldiers, let's talk in details how our immune system gets rid of any pathogen. Our immune system has three lines of defense. The first and second line, we call it innate immune response. And the third line of defense, we call it adaptive immune response. The first line of defense is the wall that prevents any pathogen from entering our bodies, such as the skin, hairs and nose, and cilia of airways. The second line of defense is some cells that will attack that foreign substance which pass the first line of defense. The immune response of innate immunity is very fast, about minutes to hours, but they can't make memory. Imagine that the pathogen passes first and second line of defenses. The adaptive immunity or the third line of defense will start the battle. Adaptive immune response consists of specialized cells which have receptor in their surface specific to one pathogen. The immune response of adaptive immunity is so slow, about days or weeks, but they can make memory, memorize the structure of the pathogen, so if the same pathogen enters our body again, they will attack and they eliminate it in a faster and better way. So now let's see the complete immune response. Imagine that you breathe a bacteria and this bacteria passes the first line of defense, nose hairs and cilia of airways, and then enters the cells of our lungs. Now the second line of defense will attack. The first cell of the second line of defense will attack that cells which stays in different tissues. Yes, macrophage. Macrophage engulfs this bacteria, then it releases cytokines to amplify the inflammation by attracting other immune cells Cells, such as basophils and mast cells and both secrete their cytoplasmic granules and cytokines to amplify the inflammation. Neutrophil in the blood moves toward the site of infection and starts the battle. And if the pathogen is a virus, natural killer cell will be involved in the battle. Dendritic cells at that time make antigen presentation to the T cells, and also B cells do that. T cells will divide many times and differentiate into T helper cells or T cytotoxic cells. T helper cells will secrete cytokines that will activate B cells. B cells now go through clonal expansion, and then B cells will convert to its activated form, plasma cells. Plasma cells is the activated form of B cells. Plasma cells produce specific antibodies to the pathogen to facilitate the complete elimination process. Not only only that, but also some of B cells and T cells will convert into memory cells. Remember this pathogen in case it invades our body again. Clonal expansion and plasma cell formation will be faster this time to kill this pathogen in a shorter time. That's all we have in immunity overview lecture. I hope you enjoy it. Goodbye.